A general strike is underway in Myanmar after a violent weekend that saw three protesters shot dead. Thousands continue to demonstrate despite the threat of renewed military force. The European Union has joined international condemnation of the coup. The EU says it's ready to impose targeted sanctions on Myanmar's military leaders and their economic interests. More than 1,000 Myanmar migrant workers living in Thailand have also been protesting against the coup. Gathering in front of the UN headquarters in Bangkok, they've observed a minute's silence to remember those who've died. Today, yeah, it's a working day. But we, the people of Myanmar today, we sacrifice ourselves to, uh, to come out and cry and express our feeling. Let the world know that we want democracy and we want freedom. We do not want any more dictatorship in our life. This is the cry of the younger generation at this point of time in front of the United Nations. Myanmar citizens working in Thailand have turned up in droves in order to protest in front of the United Nations. Many have taken a day off with support as well as encouragement from their own employers. Now some of them have even brought their children out here in order to join in the protest and to learn about this revolution, that they are standing in unity with their own countrymen back in Myanmar. Now many of them are here in front of the United Nations because they want the UN to step in to help to bring down the military coup in the country country and also to return governance to the civilian government back home in Myanmar. May Wong, CNA, Bangkok. Joining us live for more is former Indonesian Foreign Minister Dr. Martin Nataligawa. Dr. Nataligawa, how do you perceive what's happening now in Myanmar? Well, obviously it's a serious and a very grave setback to Myanmar's transition to democracy. Uh, it has uh, ramifications, obviously, for Myanmar itself, the kind of uh, violations of uh, liberty, personal civil liberties and violations of democratic principles that we are seeing day in and day out can only be seen to be a grave development for Myanmar. But beyond Myanmar itself, this uh, development is, is, has a potentially extremely uh, grave consequences as well for our region, Southeast Asia, uh, beyond Southeast Asia. And we are seeing now, day in, day out, uh, various capitals uh, in the world expressing their abhorrence and how they deplore uh, the developments uh, in Myanmar. A military-ruled Myanmar is something ASEAN has had to deal with in the past. Is this a similar situation we're dealing with now? Well, uh, yes and no. You're, you're quite right. Uh, we have had periods in the past when uh, military rule prevailed in Myanmar and ASEAN engaged and was very much part of the solution in pushing Myanmar towards uh, democratic reform. But the key difference today compared to, say, a decade ago is that the people of Myanmar have tasted uh, the, the, what, what freedom entails and what it means. And I think there is a yearning for freedom, a yearning for liberty and, and respect for, for the democratic principle that is probably uh, you know, a bit less obvious at the time, uh, say 10 years ago. And Myanmar obviously is now very much more connected uh, globally through various means of telecommunications. And therefore, it will be far more difficult, uh, I believe, uh, to, for the uh, military authorities to try to uh, you know, to rewind uh, and the developments and as if to return to how Myanmar was uh, prior to uh, the democratic reform. Uh, the, the, uh, the genie is out, out of the bottle. Uh, democratic, the yearning for democracy and, and civil liberties is, I believe, very much ingrained in amongst the uh, Myanmar population. Well, Indonesia is one of the world's largest democracies. It supported the idea of this informal ASEAN meeting on Myanmar. How do you expect the grouping to tackle the crisis going forward? Well, it is only right, and I'm, I'm, I deeply appreciate the fact that Indonesia has chosen uh, to adopt this outlook, this approach. Uh, Indonesia indeed is a, is a major democratic uh, a country with uh, respectful democratic principles in the region, and it must be seen to be ahead and to be to be leading the, the efforts. Uh, you know, I mean, over the past many years, ASEAN, including Indonesia within it, 
was very much part of the solution in Myanmar's uh, in managing uh, Myanmar's uh, transition to democracy. They were very difficult years when the Myanmar issue really consumed ASEAN, really defined ASEAN in a way. But all of us within ASEAN, including us Indonesia with Myanmar, we work hand in hand to try to promote and encourage one another to, in support of democratic reform. Uh, unfortunately, for whatever reasons, uh, the, the recent few years have seen some backsliding and we are where we are now. Uh, it is not too late for ASEAN to once again come to the fore. Uh, I think it will take more than a meeting uh, rather than be focused on whether or not there will be an informal ASEAN meeting or, or not. I think it's very important for ASEAN to be crystal clear in what their expectations are on, on Myanmar. And let it be uh, recalled that when we speak of ASEAN, Myanmar is part of ASEAN. It is not as if it's ASEAN versus Myanmar, because Myanmar is part of the ASEAN community, part of the ASEAN family, and we must all uh, find a way out. It is not too late uh, for, the, for the military uh, authorities to reverse back and, and, and allow democratic paths to resume. Uh, with that in mind then, uh, what, what do you see as a diplomatically-led solution uh, for this situation that Myanmar now finds itself in? Well, I think first and foremost, it is critically important for ASEAN to be seen and to be, as a matter of practice, to be in leadership position. How can we speak of ASEAN centrality uh, beyond uh, our immediate region in the Indo-Pacific and et cetera, when we can't even manage our own internal regional affairs. Uh, I think it is critically important for ASEAN, first and foremost, to be timely in its response and not to await until the situation becomes worse. Uh, it helps that uh, within hours, within day, a day after the uh, latest, incident, latest development, the chair of ASEAN already issued what could be the most minimum of statement, but it must be more than statement. Myanmar, ASEAN, first and foremost, I believe, must ascertain the fate of the leaders, the political, the democratically elected leaders of Myanmar, how their conditions are, and be crystal clear in ask, in, in calling for their early, for their immediate release and for democratic uh, uh, path to be resumed in, in Myanmar. Uh, and I mean, one can well imagine uh, if the situation is allowed to continue, not only would uh, instability return as it has already to Myanmar, but instead uh, as well to the wider region. You know, we've seen many examples elsewhere in other parts of the world where internal uh, democratic uh, convulsions uh, became followed up by geopolitical tensions between so-called major powers. And ASEAN must provide an alternative vision that we can uh, uh, manage the development in Myanmar. And by the way, the ASEAN that we speak of today is an ASEAN that is a community uh, respectful of democracy, respectful of good governance and, and, and civil liberties, of peace, the right of, for peaceful protests, etc. So ASEAN must be on the right side of history uh, in this and they must act urgently and without, not without delay. Well, thank you for your thoughts this evening, Dr. Martin Natalagawa, former Indonesian Foreign Minister and former Director General for ASEAN Corporation.